Hello everyone, in case we haven't met, I'm uh, General George Washington. I'm the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, and it is uh, June of 1778. And I just wanted to uh, recap what we've been doing. I know Mark's had you down south with General Green and uh, Francis Marion, my friend the Swamp Fox. So, but we're back up north, 1778. And we just got through a very, very harsh winter. We, we camped out at Valley Forge, about 20 miles north of Philadelphia. Remember, the British had taken Philadelphia from us, and uh, they didn't find it as hospitable as they thought. And so uh, they, they weathered through a tough winter as well. Um, I got about, uh, I'm down to about... Uh, I don't know how many men left uh, in the middle of the winter. Uh, I lost more men, good men. Uh, I lost more men to disease and malnutrition and the elements than I did to anything else. Uh, but the good news was is that uh, General von Steuben came and uh, he started training our, our army uh, the way that an army should be trained. And because of his making our army a professional army, uh, we picked up a lot of new recruits and had a tremendous amount of reenlistments. It seems the guys really like this professionalism that we had going. And so now my army uh, counts about 12,000 men in it. And out of that, probably 5,000, 6,000 of them have been in battle. So I've got a good army going here. So uh, in May, General Howe uh, resigns, and uh, he and General Clinton, who are both in Philadelphia, uh, start, uh, they get the word from, from Britain to uh, move back to New York City. They're both happy about this. Howe is upset because he's never really, no matter what he does, he can't seem to demoralize and on a whole, the American people. And so, uh, which was one of the reasons that he resigned. So Clinton and Howe, Howe goes ahead. Clinton starts moving his army of about 12,000, 13,000 out of Philadelphia. And he is going up to, uh, across New Jersey to New York City, which is where he wants to make his headquarters again. And so, uh, they're basically going southwest to northeast. And I'm only about 25 miles, 20 miles north of Philadelphia, and I'm sitting there. So they have to cross my path. And I look at this as an opportunity to maybe go on the offensive. Uh, once and for all, we're going to take something in, you know, into our hands. We got these professional guys, and they're, they're wanting to do something. So as... As Clinton is going up New Jersey through central New Jersey, um, he gets, he's marching his uh, troops. He's basically got two troops. He's got the, the, the uh, uh, fighting man is in the front group. And then the, some of the fighting men and all the wagons and all that are in the back group. And they have a rear guard. You always have a rear guard protecting you from anybody coming at you. So, I look at this and I say, this is a good opportunity for our army. And I call a uh, council of, of uh, war and the generals are him and and Holland. And General Lee, Charles Lee, who is my second in command, he wants to not do anything. He wants to wait for the French. Uh, the French have signed an alliance with us and he said, let's just wait for the French. And uh, um, as a side note, I'm starting to get a lot of, a lot of heat. People are saying I'm not doing my job right. And, uh, so I need something. I need something to silence those people and to show that our new army, that we can really do battle. So, uh, it's in a place called Mammoth Courthouse, which is modern day, uh, Freehold, New Jersey. And I think Mark was uh, raised a little bit uh, in Princeton, uh, and he, he talked about that. In Princeton and Freehold, not very far apart, maybe 10, 15 miles. So um, 
we decide this is what we're going to do. So I send Lee to go up against their rear guard. And so I think, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out a drawing and we'll get to the drawing so you can see actually what's going on. So hang on just a second. I got to get this thing over here. So. You know, when I was a general, we never had paper that big. It was, it was unheard of. Okay, so here's the, here's the way that it's laid out. Clinton is coming up this way with his troops, up this way, and then his rear guard is coming up behind him. So General Lee, who really doesn't want this battle, he really doesn't want to get involved in it. He just wants them to go free. And that would just be a disaster to let the British go across our, our front and, and not do anything to him. But Lee, that's what Lee wants to do. He just wants to wait. So I tell Lee to go out and engage the rear guard of the British. And so he engages them here. This is General Lee here. And this is Clinton's troops here. You can always tell by the red and the blue. Mark's got me trained well here. So Clinton attacks. Lee can't coordinate his troops, can't figure out what's going on. So Clinton, or uh, Lee, orders a full retreat back up this way, back to our troops. He's in full retreat for no reason. He's coming this way. I'm up here, and I see this. All the troops are coming back. I'm on my horse, so I get down this, this road here, and I go past our, our main batteries, and this is Lee's rear guard right here, okay? So Lee's retreating. The British are coming after him like this. They're, they're just coming right up. I get down in here, and I do my usual. I get up. I'm on my horse, and I'm telling the guys, stop. Stop retreating. Turn around and fight and fight hard. And these guys, they really want to fight, but their commander is telling them not to. So I send Lee off to Nowheresville, and I got the troops now. And so this rear guard, okay, of Lee's stands pat, fighting guys, fighting. And they stand pat, and the British are stuck right here. They stuck right here. Boom, boom. This gives me time to bring up the rest of our army. And we got uh, Mad Anthony Wayne going. We got Sterling from the New York battle. My young French friend Lafayette is back here. And, and Nat Green is over in here right before we send him to the south. And we're, we're just doing battle back and forth. I convinced Green, this is Green over here, to go up here, get his cannons, and start shooting down on the British. And that's what he's doing. All of a sudden, Clinton comes up, and he brings his artillery up. Now, I want to tell you that it's June 28, 1778. It's over 100 degrees. It's over 100 degrees out. We're still wearing woolies, and the British still got their woolies on. People are just dropping all over the place. So the battle goes on in the middle of the afternoon, and we're just, everybody's firing cannons. There's artillery, there's cannons, there's all kinds of stuff going on. This is the battle in which you have uh, Mary Hayes, Mary Ludwig Hayes, becomes known as Molly Pritchard. Her husband gets killed, and... She picks up the rod, and she starts taking his position. He was a, a, a rammer in one of these batteries up here. And the, the British got the husband, but not Mary. And she fought that whole battle. And so um, the battle as a, as a whole goes on for about three hours. Finally, after uh, the sun sets, and I'm thinking about 
eh, maybe I'll go after him a little bit more. But my generals convinced me to sit tight. The guys are exhausted. They're, half of them have died from a heat stroke. And the British kind of feel the same way. So we stopped fighting. Clinton takes his troops and in the middle of the night sneaks out and goes to New York. So I'm, here I am, but we have fought hard. We've convinced the British that this new American army is professional and we can do battle head to head, head with them. And to prove it, we lost about 500 men total. They lost about 1,400 men. So we did a very, very good job in this battle. And we have solidified our position. We've now taken over all of New Jersey. And we will control New Jersey for the rest of the American Revolutionary War. Uh, and we have a perfect position now to watch Clinton in New York City to see what's going on. From Freehold, we got some high mountains that we can sit atop. We can watch the ships come in and out. We can see what's going on and react accordingly. So that was, that was the action going on. So uh, tomorrow we'll finish up and uh, maybe we'll go to Virginia. Have a good night.